Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. On today's video, guys, I am going to be doing yet again another mo movie review. And in this review, I am going to be doing a review for Ryan Coogler's Black Panther Wakanda Forever uh, that was just released this November. Um, and uh, as far as things to tell you what's upcoming for the channel, first of all, I know it has been a couple weeks since I uploaded the video. I decided I was going to stop at the Diary of a Wimpy Kid ranking and get that out of the way first because I know you guys always want to see that. And then wait a couple weeks until I can figure out what I have in store next because I know I said I, I had a plan for November or whatever and there's going to be lots of exciting stuff to be coming in November. Uh, really, I didn't. I mean... I was expecting to do the Diary of a Wimpy Kid ranking later in November. That's why I kind of said, oh, you know, some fun content coming in November. But I just got it all done in, at you know, the you know first couple days of November. Um, but there is going to be some more content coming this month, though, before it does end. Uh, obviously, this review, um, I'm going to be doing an MCU movies tier list. I'm going to be doing an updated one of those because since I did it last year, uh, I said I might do another one, you know, in the future or whatever. And since it is the end of Phase 4, we've gotten quite a few new MCU movies. My opinions have changed on some of the movies, uh, obviously from a year later now. Um, and so, yeah, I wanted to do an updated MCU movie tier list as well. And also, this upcoming weekend, Sunday, is going to be the series finale of The Walking Dead. I know, many of you have not heard me talk about The Walking Dead in a couple of years, um, but I do really want to finish off my talk about The Walking Dead. It might not be the last time I ever talk about The Walking Dead because they are making spinoff shows that I am somewhat interested in. Some of them. Some of them I am. So maybe I'll release some more Walking Dead content, but I really haven't been keeping you guys up to date with how I feel about it right now because I, I took I took kind of a break from it uh, in season 10 when they did the last, you know, six or so episodes. And then I came back finally uh, after you know, watching those episodes, and uh, it, it did get me intrigued, especially these last few episodes, and so I'm excited to see how they ended, and I will be doing some content related to The Walking Dead, at least one video, but I would like to do maybe two or three videos related to it if I can come up with something, um, so stay tuned for that as well, and uh, there are a couple of other movies that I am going to watch before the ending of the year, and then I will do an updated movie 2022 movies tier list is what I'm going to be doing. Uh, not an updated, sorry. Uh, 2020 movies that I watched tier list, um, which will be really fun because there was a lot of movies that I watched that I never got to review on and you guys never got to hear my opinion on. So you're probably curious about that as well. And I think that's really it. Um, I know that was a long list of announcements and you know I've been trying to cut out, down on the announcements and everything. But uh, this the review itself shouldn't take very long, so I guess getting on into the review, for those of you who have not watched Black Panther Wakanda Forever, without spoiling it, obviously we continue off uh, after, in the trailers, you know, they kind of hinted it pretty well, um, you know, Black, the King uh, T'Challa uh, passes away, which in real life, of course, we know that Chadwick Boseman passed away, so they had to come up with something in this movie. And it's not really a major spoiler. It happens in the first couple of minutes of the movie. Uh, the, the excuse they come up with is that he got, like, an illness, and um, uh, Shuri is trying to, you know, create a cure before he dies, and then the uh, queen uh, eventually reveals to her that he has passed away. So you have, for about the first half hour of the movie, they really, really do focus on kind of honoring Chadwick Boseman and making it kind of directed towards him. And then after that, that's where they start, you know, <clears throat> adding in uh, the, the, you know, the plots and, you know, the, the actual conflicts. Because obviously they're not, we're just going to, we're not just going to make a whole movie, you know, just uh, raving on Chadwick Boseman and his death and things like that. So uh, that's when they start getting into the, the, the conflict. And basically in the movie, there's this other tribe from what I could understand. And they're like these underwater people. They kind of remind me of Avatar a little bit just from the outfits that they wear and stuff like that. But it's like this underwater tribe that they're having conflict with, and um, uh, yeah, to be honest, I wasn't paying that much attention, so I can't really remember the details, and it's probably better I don't tell you, but basically the villain is is this tribe, and the leader of the tribe is obviously Namor, um, and that's kind of the conflict in the movie, and Ironheart does get introduced at, at some point in the movie, in the in the second act, act I believe, and uh, she does play... Um, 
a, a small role, not, you know, like a huge role or anything in the movie, you know, obviously she's gonna get her own show and everything like that, so that's when she'll, it'll be her time to shine, so she has a small role in this movie, it's not like she's just an afterthought and just a cameo, like, hey, Ironheart's coming, watch the show when she comes in, she does play a small role in the movie, um, and, uh, yeah, that's kind of the plot, uh, without, you know, spoiling too much, um, yeah, there's just a good bit of time where we are, uh, you know, honoring Chadwick Boseman, um, and the characters are honoring T'Challa in the movie and things like that and his death and stuff like that. And then uh, once we get into the second act, that's where we get introduced to Ironheart and, you know, the actual conflict that's going in the movie. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much the plot. So what are the good things and the bad things that I like about this movie? Um, you know, I wasn't too afraid about this. You know, I think most movies, you know, they do it right, you know, they, they, uh, you know, they don't disrespect it or anything like that, but they did a good job at honoring Chadwick Boseman, um, to the best of their ability, and really making it feel like the plot could have just been an actual plan for the story of Wakanda Forever. Uh, it worked out for the mo most part. It had a few drawbacks, um, obviously, that would make me prefer that Black Panther T'Challa was still alive, um, and able to be in this movie, um, but they really made it seem like um, it was a part of the plan all along, and it really worked <clears throat> for the, the plot overall. So they did a good job with honoring him and uh, adapting to the, the the unfortunate events that happened and uh, <clears throat> um, just making it uh, all, in the end, work for the movie. I also do like the... I know a lot of people... I heard a few people say the villain was kind of boring in this movie, I didn't think he was boring, but what I did like is that, um, the, the villain, um, it, it wasn't just like, yeah, we gotta beat this villain, cause we gotta, you know, the world's gonna end if, if he takes over, or whatever. It was a little more complex than that in this movie. There were actual threats, because, you know, in most superhero movies, you know, obviously the hero's gonna win 95% of the, you know, nine, nine times out of ten, unless it's Avengers Infinity War, um, so there's not really any ground, there's not really any emotion, you know, there's not really any, uh, what are we gonna do if, if these people don't, uh, defeat them? In this movie, there is a little bit of that, though, with, uh, kind of the threat to Wakanda and its resources, you know, external forces trying to, uh, take the resources from them, and, um, you get a little bit of that at the, at the first act, and then, uh, kind of comes back, um, towards the end of the movie as well. Um, and also, there's just an overall environmental threat going on with Wakanda because of the uh, the characters, uh, the the villain in in this movie. Um, and I can't remember if it was intentional or anything like that. I just know that it was like some dispute over the two tribes. You know, there was some reason for their dispute. So it wasn't just like at the, from the beginning of the movie, this villain was here and they were going after Wakanda. It just so happened, you know, events fell that, you know, now they're, these two tribes are having conflicts with each other. That's what I, from what I could understand. <clears throat> um, and so I do like how it's a little bit more complex. It's not just a very basic and generic um, layout that we have in a lot of other, you know, comic book films where, you know, at the ending of the movie, you know, the, the heroes are going to come out victorious. There is actually other threats besides, you know, just them losing to the, uh, to the villains that we know that they're not going to lose to anyway. Um, so yeah, those were th some things that I really liked about the movie. I think the CGI was improved on. I didn't really pay attention to the CGI a whole lot in the first movie. Um, cause I only watched it. I've only watched it once. I haven't rewatched it yet. Um, but, uh, from what I could see from clips that I could see from, you know, year, you know, years later after just seeing clips here and there and videos and stuff like that, it does seem like they improved on the CGI. Like I kind of revealed in the plot as well, I think Ironheart did an okay job in this, in this movie. Um, you know, I think they're kind of just saving the, the good stuff for the show and, you know, kind of encouraging you to go watch the show by putting her in this movie. And it's not like she served no purpose in this movie. I think she did have somewhat of a purpose in this movie. Um, and it was, you know, it was just nice to have her in here, I guess. So yeah, there wasn't really a whole lot of good to talk about and there wasn't really a whole lot of bad to talk about either. There wasn't really anything that I know of that really stuck out to me that I didn't like. Um... Except, you know, the, the one thing I guess I, I should mention, I think, I think it was really the only thing that I could think of, was because, you know, and it, it's not their fault at all, um, but I feel like they, they may have been able to do something different. 
obviously because of Chadwick Boseman's death, they had to come up with kind of a new Black Panther. It, it would have been really hard to continue the Black Panther arc without having a new Black Panther. So I understand, you know, why they had to have... Um, I'll, I'll just say it. I don't think it's really a huge spoiler. I think a lot of people could have predicted it. Um, I don't have a huge issue with Shuri taking over, uh, temporarily, I should say, because it, it, it kind of gets twisted towards the end, which you'll see, and I won't spoil anything about that. Uh, but, uh, I think they could have done something different, maybe even just not have had another Black Panther. I, I understand it was more for plot reasons than it was for just continuity and, you know, having a Black Panther still, um, but it's just like, you know, you know you've been just gender swapping all of the, the old superheroes, you know, in, in Phase 4, like most of them, um, and so you're just gonna go ahead and gender swap a guy who passed away, and it's not really his fault, um, it, it's not that it's disrespectful or anything, it's just like, come on, come up with something a little bit more interesting other than just always having the gender swap version of a male superhero, and, uh, obviously you have Ironheart in the mix too, so it doesn't really help, you know, you have another gender-swapped, uh, superhero in here, because, let's be honest, Ironheart is just a, a kid female version of Iron Man, like, she's a fan of Iron Man or whatever, I don't know if that's actually canon or anything, but it, it would be as if she was just, like, a fan of Iron Man, and that's how she came up with the design for her suit. <clears throat> so, I don't know, I think they could have come, came up with something better, um, and it, it, I don't think it was needed for the plot, uh, because it really didn't come into the mix until the final act, just so that they could do, you know, this one battle sequence, and then after that, you know, we didn't really need her anymore as Black Panther, really. Um, I don't know if they're gonna, ever gonna make another Black Panther movie, but if they're not, <coughs> there, there's really is no reason for it, but... Like I said, not really a whole lot of good or bad things to talk about this movie. I think it was just a solid, you know, overall, just to put it in summary, I think it was a solid movie, and despite the obstacles that stood in its way with, obviously, the tragic passing of uh, Chadwick Boseman, they did a good job. They they handled it as best as I think they, they could have, you know, maybe a few tweaks here and there, but I think they really did a great job, and they certainly, certainly could have made a lot more mistakes. I mean... Look at all the other films that we had in Phase 4 and how inconsistent most of them were, despite really not having a whole lot holding them back from being a good movie. Um, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, a movie that had to deal with, you know, COVID and uh, their literal lead actor, the main character of the movie, passing away, did a better job than most of the other movies in Phase 4. Um, I will say right away, I think this is the second best movie of Phase 4 behind, uh, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, <coughs> um, and, uh, overall, I enjoyed it, and I'm, I'm honestly, actually, I'm actually surprised that I enjoyed it, because I wasn't a huge fan of the first Black Panther, you guys, I'm really hoarse in this video, um, a little sick, you know, got a sore throat, so, sorry about that, but, yeah, I think it just, um, you know, maybe a few tweaks in there could have happened, but, uh, like I said, in comparison to all the other movies in Phase 4, this movie did a pretty solid job and felt like a natural continuation to Black Panther, despite the fact that, obviously, it wasn't. Um, and it was a nice, humble conclusion to Phase 4. And my expectations, again, were very low for this movie because I wasn't a huge fan of the original Black Panther, thought it was, you know, pretty overrated. Um, and so, you know, seeing that this movie was also 2 hours and 40 minutes long or something like that, I was like, wow, this movie's going to be way too long, and I'm probably not going to enjoy it because I didn't enjoy the first Black Panther. But then when I actually watched the movie, didn't feel as long as it actually was. Um, you know, maybe they could have trimmed down on some time, but that wasn't a huge issue. And I actually ended up enjoying it. So overall, out of 10, uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, I gave this movie a 4 out of 5 stars. Um, I don't think it's quite an 8 out of 10 if you, you know, just directly convert it. I'm going to be giving it a 7.5 out of 10. Um, it's not like a, you know, absolutely loved this movie, craved it, um, didn't think, it, you know, didn't think it was anything exceptional or anything like that. Um, but, uh, in comparison to the very inconsistent Phase 4 movies that we've got, this was a pretty competent movie with all that it was against it. Uh, it worked for me, and I didn't really have any major issues with it. So I give it a 7.5 out of 10, and that's pretty much all there is to talk about. So stay tuned for the future content. Like I said, we got some Walking Dead content. We have some 
more MCU content coming with the MCU movies tier list that I'm probably going to be starting up to record today just because I really like talking about movies and the MCU and I haven't talked about it in a while. So I'm really excited to do that. So I'm probably just going to do it today to knock it out, the, the recording process. So um, otherwise, stay tuned for the future content. We got a few more movie reviews this year. Obviously, we got the big release of Avatar next month as well. And that's probably going to be the last movie I watch for 2022. And so, sometime towards the ending of the year, which is lurking close, uh, I will be doing a 2022 Movies I Saw tier list, which I'm really excited to do and tell you uh, about the movies that I never did a review with this year, because there were a lot of movies, especially in the first half, that I didn't get to tell you my opinions on. So, otherwise, stay tuned, uh, like and subscribe, guys, and I will see you next time.